Stay tuned for a log lift upgrade on this old homemade log splitter. So a little backstory on this splitter. It's a homemade unit. Started out with a free I-beam, 8 by 8 by half inch thick. Hydraulic ram, 4 inch, I believe it's a Prince. Uh, how long is the stroke? I'll post that in here. And that was out of a dumpster. It had a cracked end on it. I was able to secure a new one, reasonable. And uh, with a tie rod type construction, that was easy to change. And the old Briggs and Stratton 5 horse. That came out of a dumpster as well. This was built 25 years ago. It doesn't get a lot of use, but when it does, it'll do some damage. So, problem is, everyone who uses this thing is either crippled or getting older, and the wood's getting heavier. Time for a log lift. This has had no workstation on it, so everything falls to the ground. So well, maybe we'll do that too. And uh, there's been a bucket list item for 25 years to put a log lift on this thing. And then, lo and behold, on the internet, a kit. A log lift kit. Made by Rugged Made. To fit their splitters. We also market it. For the DIY person to adapt to whatever and here we have whatever so this eye beams 24 inches off the ground looking at the paperwork this eye beam probably needs to be four inches higher which we can do with this old boat trailer axle that's under here on leaf springs we can move those leaf spring perches and uh, get this thing up in the air a little bit more and that'll actually help the toll people that use this thing and um, from there we'll get into what we had to do to get the hydraulics going we're going to have to add a valve and one of the big questions in that 25 years in my little brain was can you series on a hydraulic valve on the output of the existing valve and I read yes but I also read no so there's a proper way to do it the output ports don't want to see high pressures so you can go to the spec sheet of your valve this is a Prince lug splitter valve and if you look this model up 150 psi max pressure at that port anything that exceeds that I don't know what will happen so a little bit more research the power beyond valve we'll add that in front and we'll explain that more after it's together from a couple states away two days and this is how the log lift kit comes in one day a box of smaller parts comes Okay, unbox. This is what comes in the kit. Upper tray, lower tray, they slide together. Miscellaneous pins. Put the two trays together. Pivot pins, hydraulic ram pins, and two fittings, 3 8 NPT by 3 8 JIC, I guess. brackets to go on the I-beam and the hydraulic ram not sure maybe a 10 inch stroke on that so after some drilling the bracketry has been mounted to the I-beam. There's the pivot point 
for the loading tray and the pivot point for the operating hydraulic ram. And you can see as we have the two halves of the loading tray assembled together and sitting flat on the floor coming up to the I-beam there's a distance discrepancy that we're going to have to deal with several inches there okay looks like this is going to work out without modifications to the loading tray it's uh, fairly close to parallel with the ground uh, we put a suspension lift in to bring the I-beam up our working height of the I-beam is uh, approximately 30 inches another factor you'll have to factor in if you're doing this on your log splitter is the dimension of the I-beam here we have an 8 inch I-beam so if you're working surface you're shooting for 30 inches it's going to be affected by the height of the I-beam too because the mounting hardware for the hinge pivot for this loading tray mounts to the bottom plane of the I-beam so that will have effect on your net result so we have about a five and a half inch suspension lift in this thing to get this I-beam up higher to work with the loading tray. Our suspension lift consisted of moving a spring eye from the top of this to the bottom and that was about seven inches or so and back here moving the shackle attachment point from this top plane down four inches to this bottom plane. Make sure your lift table attaching hardware is mounted in the correct spot so your table lines up in wherever you want in relation to your wedge the mounting hardware is narrower than the tabletop be aware one other point to check clearance on this table all the way up this gap here between the I-beam and the table and the carriage this distance here needs to fit through this gap. Mind your fittings. This particular fitting style is a pipe thread, NPT, National Pipe Thread. And it's the only one that gets sealant. This particular sealant is one I used in the past. I had good luck with it, so I'm sticking with it. Some people use Teflon tape. Use what you think works for you. This is a 37 degree JIC fitting. And this is the mating end. Notice the concave cone inside. These screw together directly. No thread sealant. Fitting below is pipe thread, tapered pipe thread. That requires sealant. And different than the JIC, as this log splitter was originally built with some different type fittings, this is the best I can figure an NPTF by NPSM fitting. Notice the cone inside, convex, 30 degree. So this is a tapered pipe thread on this end. National pipe thread fuel, I think. And this is a national pipe straight mechanical. This end will accept a national pipe thread as long as it has the chamfer in here as seen. That chamfer and this cone do the sealing. No pipe dope or Teflon tape is needed here. 
this end you would have to use sealant on if you were going into a traditional pipe thread fitting. One example of where this would be used if you have a hydraulic hose with two male ends, you can screw one end of that hose into one of your components, but the other end you won't be able to rotate the hose, so you would need a swivel fitting such as this. And that one works with this style end. Notice the seat. And that's a pipe thread. Homemade mounting plate. You may have to space your second valve. Be aware. We added some work tables on the side of the wedge. They fold up for transport. And have a little kickstand that just rests in the I-beam. They'll get covered with sheet metal. Adding a hydraulic circuit. This was our original valve for the log splitter the way it was. And we had to add on another valve to actuate our newly installed log lift. You can't just use any valve and series them up. The output ports don't want to see high pressures. By seriesing on a, another valve, you're going to backfeed pressure into the output of the first. You need a specialized valve. And that's the power beyond valve. So as this valve comes, there's a plug in this port. And it'll work with your in and your outflow to tank. If you want to connect any apparatus beyond, you remove this plug. You've Put in a specialized adapter and then off you go. So what we did here, the existing valve, got the power beyond valve in front of it. So we just added our hydraulic circuits in front of the original valve. So hydraulic pump comes up into this line. This is your pressure from the pump. Don't need a gauge. One was installed just cuz. And here's your in port. These two are your work ports. A and B typically labeled. This one back here is your flow back to tank. Return. And this one here is pressure to the next valve. The flow back to the tank typically gets teed in near the tank return. In this case, I teed it in up here. I'm sure that will be fine. I'm not an hydraulic expert, but um, that's just low, just waste flow, so there should be no pressure. This line was already established. Just had to add a T and uh, it's low pressure. This one's worked for years with the clamp on it. This one did not need to be a high pressure line, but it was convenient and cheap enough just to buy from the same supplier that supplied everything else. So this valve will actuate the log lift. And this one will continue to actuate the splitting cylinder. If you're adding the hydraulic circuit, this particular valve was purchased through Rugged Maid's website. These valves both have pressure relief as part of their construction. In this case, it's redundant. 
as this one first in line will do all the work should an overpressure condition exist such as running a ram all the way out to the end stops or getting a log that refuses to split Got lucky here. Plenty of room there. If you make extra work tables around your wedge, something else to look out for. And here we are, ready for transport. In the teardown, I'm reminded, this is the second generation of this log splitter, and we're about to go to the third generation. What I mean by that is, I made some gross changes years ago. That's the date on this hydraulic tank when I bought that. I built this thing years before. I forgot about that using a different hydraulic system. Same cylinder, same engine, but at the time I had a smaller axle under it with little 8 inch wheels. I did not run the two stage log splitter pump. I had what they I called a mason dump pump. It was about a 12 inch square box with an integral pump and integral valve. And that was coupled to this engine. And it worked. I mean, it split wood. But the problem is it didn't have the two-stage hydraulic pressure system like this pump does. And Mason dump pump is generally driven by some large engine like V8 or diesel or whatever in your ton trucks, you know, dualies with the either 8 or 10-foot dump body on the back. And that's what that pump was from, I'm telling you about. When you got into a log, you had to feather it a little bit and kind of yank and feather the handle, otherwise you'd stall the engine. So that was the first generation. And uh, when I decided to go bigger and better years ago, that's when I bought the correct log splitter pump. And when you get into a stubborn log, it shifts hydraulic pressures internally, allowing the smaller engine to continue running without stalling. And then the adequate tank to go with it. Just more backstory for you in case you care.